Hello, my dear students, energetic students, physics enthusiasts. How are you? So welcome, welcome, welcome to the series of noodle chopsticks. And I, I, as I've spoken earlier, this is not just a fancy name given to any random series. There is a reason I call it noodle chopsticks. So what is this series all about? Like we saw earlier, if you if you want to travel from a place A to B or, or whatever your destination is, maybe it's an academic goal. So there are two ways to do that. One of them is some kind of fancy way to do like this. Or maybe there's another approach to that, which is a straight line method. And to me personally, this is the preferred choice, but I don't know. There are people who would prefer this. And that's the reason I call this noodle chopstick series. So whether you prefer the noodle way or the chopsticks way, that's your choice. But for now, I will I will go with this route because that's the preferred way. Because if you think about noodle method, the noodle method is definitely very confusing. It is going to be lengthy. It is going to be error prone. It is going to be difficult to grasp. Then why do many teachers use it? You might have seen many teachers teaching you with 15 to 20 lines of derivations and things look so so messed up that you don't even understand. So why do teachers do that? Maybe I came up with the theory that maybe those teachers learned it that way. So they don't know there is a straight line method to do something. So they learned it this way and they're just passing on to that. Or maybe they would like to portray the concept as a rocket science. Because if, if I do something in three to four lines, you might think, okay, this is too easy, but for whatever reason, some teachers want to show, no, 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 this is not easy. This is a rocket science. I don't know, whatever that reason is. So whatever the reason is, let's learn it with a chopstick. So today we are going to study a new concept. But before that, my name is Bhavdeep Sethi. I've done masters from IIT Bombay. I convert physics haters into physics lovers. And I always say, never memorize physics. Learn it with the nature around you. So nature is full of physics. It is the best textbook out there. So today we'll talk about satellites. Now, when, when the term satellite comes in, uh, many students start thinking about those ready-made equations and formulae and, and I don't know, all sorts of things. And they, I have seen the notebooks, I've seen the answer books, and they are so, so lengthy derivations, so lengthy calculations. I don't know why. The satellites is one of the easiest topics in the entire uh, JEE and NSCP syllabus. It's one of the easiest. I don't know why it's made so difficult. So let's talk about satellites. But as I always do, I'm not assuming that you know a few things. I'm I'm going to cover pre prerequisites and then I'm going to the satellite. So prerequisite number one is the gravitational force. So what is gravitational force? If there are two objects, I'll use white color ink over there. So if there are two objects, let's say mass one, and there's another object, mass two, and in the distance between them is, is D, the center to center distance is D, then as per Newton's law, and we have studied that many times since your junior grades, you know this. So the force between these two is given by G times mass one times mass two divided by the distance square. So that's the formula for gravitational force. So that's one thing you should know. Secondly, you should know the concept of centripetal force. So what is centripetal force when an object? So what is first law? First law of motion says an object at rest continues to be at rest and a body that is moving continues to move with the same velocity in the same direction unless a force is applied. But if something is going on in a circular path, then definitely it's not following the, the, the same path because if something is going in a circle, you can see it was going with this velocity in this direction. Maybe this is five meter per second. Later on, maybe it's going with five meter per second here, but you can see the direction has changed as in velocity has changed. So there is some force that is being applied here because without that force, the direction would not have changed. So when something is going in a circular path with a velocity of V and if the mass is M, so first of all, there is an acceleration of v squared by r. I'm not doing the derivation as of now. In other videos, you can refer to that. But if something is, is going with a velocity of v in a path of radius r, then there is a centripetal acceleration of v squared by r. And force is mass times acceleration. So there is a centripetal force of mv squared by r where m is the mass of the body and v square by r is the acceleration. It is the centripetal acceleration. I'll repeat one more time. If there is a body 
moving with the velocity of v in a circular path of radius r then there is a centripetal acceleration of v square by r so this is one thing you know you should know the third thing you should know before you understand satellites is gravitational potential energy so again coming back to those two masses let's say there is a mass one and there is a mass two so the amount of work required to bring from infinite distance to this point we have covered this in other videos you can refer to that this is a very quick uh, revision of that and the distance is still d so there was a force of gm1 m2 by d squared but this system as a whole has a potential energy which is a negative potential energy and why is it negative because it's an attractive force refer to my other videos for why it is negative and what does that actually mean but for now potential energy in this case is negative g times the product of these two masses m1 m2 divided by d now now don't think it was d square and i have made a mistake no this is d this is not d square so that force is d square now when you integrate you refer to my other videos you will see how so the potential energy of this system is minus g m1 m2 by d so two masses at a distance of d will have a negative potential energy of g times m1 m2 by d so these are the three things yet that you have to know so now let's go to a satellite so satellite as in let's say this is earth and there is a satellite here and it has a mass of m and let's say it is moving with a velocity of v now this velocity is called the orbital velocity so what is orbital velocity orbital velocity is given an orbit what is the velocity in that orbit so what do you mean by orbit orbit means the the radius of the circle of this path that's the orbit so this this entire thing is orbit an orbit is the path but but orbital radius so basically given an orbit at a distance of r from the center of the earth so let this is r so we are interested in finding how much is the velocity in this case very easy so we always rely in mechanics so remember in mechanics you always rely on one thing that is the second law of motion so we know that force is equal to mass times acceleration we know f equals ma now why is so let's think fundamentally here very conceptually why is this satellite going in this orbit somebody is forcing it to go in this orbit and what is that that is the gravitational pull of the earth if there were no earth the the satellite would have continued along the straight line path so there is a force that is providing the centripetal force here and what is that force that is the gravitational force so how much is the force of gravity that is simply g times the mass of the earth right mass of the earth g times m1 then m2 which is the mass of the satellite divided by r square so that is the force of gravity that force should be equal to the mass of the satellite times acceleration now what acceleration the centripetal acceleration which is v squared by r so v squared by r now you can clearly see the mass cancels out here one of the r cancels out so this velocity here is equal to square root of gm by r so that is the orbital velocity there's nothing to memorize all we have used is f equals ma f is the gravitational force is equal to mass times the centripetal acceleration so one thing that is very interesting here is the orbital velocity is independent of the mass of the satellite nowhere in this equation in this expression there is mass of satellite because it crossed out anyways so what that means is given the radius of the orbit every satellite whether heavy or light doesn't matter big small doesn't matter they will have the same velocity now let's say something is going in the orbit and and let's say i'm i'm in that satellite and i leave this pen outside this pen will become a satellite having the same velocity so that's the called the orbital velocity now another thing that comes up here so if i know the velocity and i know the distance to travel in one circle i can find the time it takes to complete one path that is called the time period time period is how long will it take to complete one full circle so time so speed equals distance by time so time is equal to distance by speed so the time here time taken to complete one circle is the distance now how much is the distance it's simply 2 pi r 
so 2 pi r that is the distance divided by the speed the speed is root gm by r so root of gm by r now, now you can see this is r to the power half that goes and multiplies becomes r to the power 3 by 2 so time period is equal to see 2 pi is a constant let's leave it here square root of g by gm is also a constant so this is r to the power 3 by 2 now the reason this, i find this very amazing is guess what and you should be proud of it you have derived kepler's law just now so doesn't this make sense so this is constant so t square is proportional to r cubed is this not the kepler's law you have derived it in two or three lines and this is the beauty of the chopstick method so if you go by noodle method, maybe it's going to take many steps. In three steps, you have derived Newton's, sorry, Kepler's law. Okay, so that is the orbital velocity gm by r. So now if I proceed further, let's talk about energy. So this satellite is here at a radius of r. So this satellite has some gravitational energy, right? It has gravitational potential energy because see, this is mass m and this is mass m separated by a distance of r so we can say there is a potential energy u of minus gm by r so that's the potential energy of this that's a potential energy now what about kinetic energy so if i calculate kinetic energy kinetic energy is equal to half times mass times velocity square now velocity in an orbit is root gm by r so square of that is gm by r so gm by r but but if i rearrange all this to resemble this i am getting gm oh my mistake here so minus gm m by r right so i'm really sorry i forgot to write the second mass so the potential energy is negative of g times the product of masses divided by the distance between them so product of masses so gmm by 2 see how closely these two resemble now so this is negative gmm by r this is by 2r gmm by 2r so whatever is this this is half of it isn't it if this is apple this is half apple if this is orange this is a half of orange obviously negative and positive is there so example being let's let's take an example let's say this were minus 100 if this is minus 100 this is half of this this will be positive 50. i'm just taking some easy number to understand here right so whatever is this value gmm by r gmm by 2r is half of it and positive or it now potential plus kinetic is total energy so if i add this total is minus 50. so think about how you know, easy it is to understand the total energy is half of the kinetic energy but negative of the, sorry so kinetic energy is half of the potential energy and the total energy is equal to kinetic energy but negative of it so if i if i add this so the total energy is coming out to be negative one plus half is negative half so minus g m m by 2 r so see how symmetric these are and that's why i say the chopstick method is easier to understand so Potential energy being minus gmm by r, kinetic energy is half of it, but obviously it is positive, gmm by 2r, positive number. And when I add them up, I get the total energy of the system, and that's coming out to be negative half, right? Negative one and positive half. So that's that's very interesting. But if I if I try to understand or analyze further, think about it. Or maybe I can analyze on this slide itself. So remember how the escape velocity means you want to take a body at infinite distance away. Maybe if I throw this pen up, it comes back. Throw it faster, it goes farther, comes back. But if I throw it with 11.2 kilometers per second, it never comes back. And why 11.2? Because if you refer to my other videos on escape velocity, you will see if I give it 11.2 kilometers per second, its total energy becomes zero. So whatever is gravitational potential energy in negative, I'm giving exactly equal to that positive kinetic energy by throwing with 11.2, total energy becomes zero. So when you give a body zero total energy, it will reach infinity and stop there now because potential energy has become zero and kinetic becomes zero there. 
total energy becomes zero. So if you want to throw something to infinity, you have to ensure that its total energy becomes zero. Now, total energy here is this much. I want to make it zero. If I want to make it zero, I have to add positive energy of this much, GMM by 2R. So if I want this satellite to escape here and go to infinity, I should provide this much of more energy so that total becomes zero. But this is exactly kinetic energy. Very, very symmetric kind of, you know, very easy to understand. Whatever is the kinetic energy, if you double that, body will go to infinity. So escape velocity can be easily found. Whatever is the orbital velocity, you make it root two times. If, because if you make velocity root two times, energy becomes double. Energy is half mv square. So basically you make this double and then it goes to infinity. It's very easy concept out there. And that's all. I mean, that's all. That's the chopstick method. So I, I always show in my classes, if Dhruv can get a gold medal in physics Olympiad and Aditi of Nish can get in chemistry Olympiad, so can you join the Telegram channel here for more information. I will keep coming with these nice videos. Uh, so keep up the high josh, high energy and see you soon. Thank you, beta. Bye-bye. Take care.